Economist reports coming out of Japan's government, or TEPCO, and the IAEA, the International Atomic Energy Agency, has the whole world and all scientists silenced on the actual truth about this worldwide nuclear event. We get lies after lies and cover-ups through the mainstream media, so the majority of the people worldwide have no idea about Fukushima's ongoing deadly release of lethal, man-made, weapons-grade radiation. They deny that it even happened. They say it is anything else other than radiation causing our illnesses and cancers. They blame it on cigarettes, alcohol, asbestos, all the things they have been blaming over the years. But these things are becoming less and less in the world. Less people are smoking. Asbestos is being removed from existence. Alcohol use is about the same. So how could they be to blame for the acceleration and now higher statistics in cancer rates, heart attacks, and birth deformities worldwide? One out of every two men and one out of every three women will be diagnosed with cancer. You are being lied to, and they are laughing at you as you follow along with and believe in their lies. Einstein once said, the world will not be destroyed by those who do evil, but by those who watch them without doing anything. Try asking someone you work with if they know the current news on Fukushima, and most will give you a blank look saying something like, what is Fukushima? Never heard of it. Or if they do know about it, their reply will be something like, oh yeah, that happened a few years ago. Those poor people over there. The news media has the world living in a false, numb, and dangerous fantasy. And the people don't want you to rip them out of that imaginary world they live in. Those of us that do speak the truth are labeled conspiracy theorists. But this is not a conspiracy, folks. I'm sorry to tell you, this is the real deal. We now live in a deadly radioactive world. Think about what you would have experienced if a single huge nuclear bomb, large enough to take out the whole northern hemisphere of Earth, had been detonated three years ago. That would have been a sudden, huge detonation, releasing all of its nuclear death immediately. And there would be no way the survivors would be able to hide, lie, or cover up the news of it. The thing within that bomb that would kill us is all the nuclear man-made isotopes of radiation that are designed to burn from the inside out, like your microwaves do when they heat your food. It would be a sudden, immediate release, and the death toll from the moment of detonation would be mind-boggling. Now, realize that the explosions of the nuclear reactors at Fukushima three years ago may have been smaller detonations than a huge nuclear bomb designed to take out half our planet, but these detonations opened the sealed reactors and released their cores of nuclear materials to allow a constant release of the same weapons-grade nuclear isotopes that a huge nuclear bomb large enough to take out the northern hemisphere of Earth would also release. Now here's where it gets even more frightening. One of the reactors at Fukushima, Reactor 3, had MOX fuel in it. That is both plutonium and uranium the same elements that would be in a nuclear bomb designed to release the worst radioactive isotopes to kill on a wider scale. Reactor 3 and the other destroyed reactors are constantly releasing this nuclear death 24 hours a day and have been releasing this every single day since March of 2011. And no, these radioactive isotopes do not dilute, either in the air or the oceans, as the IAEA's pet scientists would have you believe through their publicly stated lies. They build up as more and more of them are being released, and they multiply. 
These isotopes are neutrons, protons, and electrons, atoms, in fission. And after their so-called half-lives, they do not just disappear or get weaker. It is the fission that separates, splits the atoms into two or three. The daughters of these are now two or three times as many. And when their fission is complete after their half-life, each one of those gives birth to two or three more, even deadlier radioactive isotopes that have much longer lifespans than their parent isotopes that are also undergoing their own nuclear fission. They are constantly splitting and multiplying worldwide now, not diluting. In fact, the word diluting doesn't even belong in the same sentence that is related in any way to man-made nuclear isotopes. When these isotopes enter your body, they burn their way through your body's cells and your DNA as they undergo their fission. The cells become damaged and begin to attempt to repair themselves, but your damaged DNA no longer has the ability to provide the blueprint for that cell's original composition. So the damaged cells grow and grow, not knowing when to stop until they become malignant, cancerous tumors. If your DNA is damaged and you have offspring, your DNA no longer has a working blueprint to be able to know how to build another life. So we see terrible deformities in new births, including our wildlife and in our plants. So, in all truth, Fukushima needs to be compared to a very slow motion, huge nuclear bomb that is slowly taking out the whole northern hemisphere of Earth. And much more. Because these destroyed reactor buildings never stop releasing the radiation. The radiation now has become an amount that is much more than a single nuclear bomb detonation. Think about it. They don't even know where the three cores that escape their reactors are now. So they continuously pour water over the areas to hopefully keep them from getting hotter. <laughs> they are hot and fully active, burning their way with full nuclear fission into Earth's crust. Japan has no idea what they're doing and will not accept any help from the worldwide nuclear scientific community. Above all issues on Earth, we need to stop this radioactive release. But what we need to stop it with has not yet been invented. So, what is needed is a scientific think tank to be formed to attempt to invent something to stop this release. But the IAEA has the nuclear scientific community turned into puppets. Instead, our once trusted scientists speak of this disaster as though it is nothing to worry about and compares it to natural, not harmful potassium-40 radiation in bananas and licking iPhone chargers. <laughs> These levels of radiation are just above natural background at the WIP site. And so there is no expectation that those measurements for you or your children or anyone else will show exposure on a long count. They're down in the levels of licking your iPhone charger. And I'm not trying to be funny, I'm trying to equate radiation exposure to something that you can... They're treating us as though we are as mindless as snails and watching us fall ill and die. Their argument will be that they do not want to create mass hysteria. Well, by not giving the world the truth, they are taking away our chances of survival. And 